Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and today I'm going to be explaining scope in JavaScript. Okay, now um, I think if you are learning JavaScript or you simply don't know what scope is, it's super important that you understand the three different types of scopes we have in modern JavaScript. Okay, so right here I've listed every single type of scope we have and I'm going to be going into a bit of detail for each one in today's video. So of course the three scopes we have is the global scope, the function scope and the block scope. So if you would like to, you can pause the video right now and have a quick read of my summary here um, of these three different scopes and then I'm going to go into detail for each one beginning with the global scope. Alright, so starting us off we've got the global scope. Now, as I mentioned inside my notes, the global scope, the variables inside there are accessible from anywhere from within your JavaScript application. Okay, so for example, if I was to hop right down here, let's declare a new variable called a equal to 20. Now, also keep in mind that I do not recommend you use the var keyword in 2021, but I do want to just demonstrate here um, how this scope works when it comes to using the var keyword if you are curious. Okay, next up we've got the let keyword. We can just say let b is equal to uh, 40. Now keep in mind also that the let keyword in this context right here is going to work in the same way as using const. Okay. Next up, we've got a function called decode. Now, this function here is going to simply return the value of b. Okay, so we expect 40 to be returned from this function. Now, as we can see here, I've tried to mix it up. We've got var let slash const and a function here, which is also going to access our global um, b variable right there. So, if I was to save this head inside the browser, refresh the page, and then if I was to access or if I was to log out the window scope here, we can see that upon expanding it, we have A as part of the window scope. So if you use the var keyword, remember var was used here. If you use the var keyword, then it's going to be placed on the, on the window object. Okay, so in a way you can think of the window object to be the global scope, but as we can see here, we don't have the B. Okay, so this B right here, it is not declared or it's not available on the window object right down here because it was done using let or const. Okay, so um, keep that in mind. However, the function right down here of decode is also accessible on the window object. Now, just because the B uh, let variable is not on the window object, it doesn't mean that we can't access it globally. So if I was to say B right here in the console, we can see we get 40 right there. It's still working, but we can't say window.b undefined. We can say window.a, that's fine, but of course not the same with a B. Now let's call that decode function. We can see here we get 40. So as I mentioned earlier, with the global scope, um, you're able to access variables that are declared inside the global scope from anywhere in your application. And an example of this is from within this function right here as we are returning B perfectly fine. So that is your global scope. All right, so next up we've got the function scope. Okay, so with the function scope, it's actually quite straightforward. It simply means that any variables which you declare inside your function cannot be accessed outside of that function. Okay, so for example, if I was to declare a new variable inside this decode function right here, if I was to say var a is equal to 20, just like this, if I was to then try to console.log the value of a right here, it is not going to work. Okay, so it's only, sorry, this a here, the a is only available from within inside your function. So if I was to save this here, go inside the browser and I refresh, then I try to uh, call that function. Well, as we can see, um, you know, we're already getting this problem. So it says here, A is not defined. So when it immediately tries to console log uh, A, we're getting that error. So that is, um, you know, probably the simplest example of what I mean by function scope. Even if we were to call that function here manually, right? 
So in this case here, of course, the line which says A is equal to 20 has now ran. But even after doing that, we still cannot access A. As you can see, it's still undefined. So that is what uh, the function scope is. Now, keep in mind that the function scope is not too relevant these days. And here's why. It's because it only really applies to the var keyword. Okay, so the var keyword, the older var keyword, uh, worked on the function scope. So of course, as we demonstrated right here, this is how it works. So anything you declare inside here with the var keyword is only accessible inside your function. So it's going to make more sense why this is not too relevant uh, in the next example with the block scope. So let's get into that one right now. Okay, so when it comes to the block scope, basically variables declared inside a block cannot be accessed from outside that block. Now, what is a block? A block is simply just um, anything within a opening curly brace and a closing curly brace. So for example, with this if statement right here, it's got its own block that of course runs when this condition is true, like in this case. So where or how do we make use of that block scope? Well, only the let and const uh, declarations are going to work uh, with the block scope. So if for example, I go inside here and I say let a is equal to 20. Remember, we're using the let keyword right here. If I was to then say console.log and log out the result of a. If I save this right here, as we know, 100 is more than 20, so this code is going to run. If I try to log out the value of a, go inside the browser and refresh, we get a is not defined. So basically, by using the curly braces here and the let keyword, you're restricting the access of a to this singular block. And the same thing goes for the const keyword, okay? What if I was to change this to var? Save this right here, go back in the browser, refresh, and we get 20 right there. So that right there is an important reason and an important difference between the var keyword and let and const. Okay, so with var, even though we're declaring the, um, the variable inside this block here, the var keyword, as we saw earlier, works on function scope, not block scope. So you can access it outside of this block. Let's go back to um, the let. So this is a perfect example of the block scope. You can't access your variables outside your block. It's simple as that, okay? Now, let's talk about why I said the function scope is a bit irrelevant these days. Let's go back to that decode function, okay? So functions also have a block, okay? So if I was to once again say let a is equal to 20, then try to console.log a, we all know the results of this. We're gonna get an error, we can't access a. That is because, as we know, function scope, right? Well, yes and no, okay? Because your function has a block and we're using the let keyword. So technically, you could call this block scope, right? Because you have a block right here. Um, hope that makes sense. So if I was to try and save this and go back in the browser and refresh, of course we get our A not defined. So obviously these days, uh, try your absolute best to stick to using let and const um, because you're going to have access to block scope, which basically it's going to keep your code a lot tighter. Um, and just in general, because of the fact that your variables are going to have a lower chance of escaping, those uh, scopes, um, your code should hopefully be a little bit uh, less buggy by, of course, using the let and const and this block scope. So that is your block scope right there. And that is all for today's video on scopes in JavaScript. If this video helped you out, drop a like and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.